So today's video is going to be so much fun. We're gonna talk about how to become the best doctor possible. This is kind of an interesting way I learned during my first year as a physician on how to become a really good practitioner and care of other people, but also still have free time to do a lot of things like focus on my first year of marriage, be productive, work on YouTube videos, and play a lot of Xbox right there. Let's get into the video. All right guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Laksh and this is the MD Journey, a channel completely dedicated to helping students just like you succeed on their journey with less stress. So if you're new here, we talk about study tips, productivity, becoming efficient, and basically doing everything a little bit better, faster, and easier. So consider hitting that subscribe button if anything sounds appealing to you. And also consider hitting that like button because one, it supports the channel, and two, it tells me you like this kind of content. But today we are going to talk about an approach that I used during my first year as a medical doctor, as a physician, um, on how I was able to become the best doctor possible for me, but also still have time to enjoy myself and not be stressed and overwhelmed. So we're going to get right into it. Here is the approach. If you guys have ever watched the TV show Hoarders, you know how overwhelming, kind of disgusting it feels when you go into the home and it's like piles of stuff to the ceiling and you're just not sure how to navigate it. Well, plot twist, that place is now yours and that place is now called residence or being a physician where you're essentially walking through a house of information basically and you're not sure how to navigate it and you know at any point you're going to run into something that's going to likely trip you up that is basically the first year of a doctor the piles of information represents the files of things that you would see in an episode of hoarders and there's going to be a lot of unknowns things that you didn't even expect that you had to know they're gonna come up and trip you up and so now hopefully that picture is kind of stuck into your mind because while it may be anxiety provoking the best way to approach it is step number one embracing being uncomfortable begin to understand that as soon as you embrace being uncomfortable it's like this beautiful inevitable event you're going to be uncomfortable at every phase of your medical journey including being a new physician so as soon as you embrace it that hoarder kind of analogy instead of all of the material that looks overwhelming for things that you have to master and the things that can trip you up you actually begin to look at them as opportunities that you can tackle one at a time. You essentially expect that things will trip you up. You're gonna go into a patient's room and not have any idea what to do. You're going to admit somebody and not know how to manage them. You're going to be asked a question by a patient or nurse, your physicians um, who are supervising you, and you still don't know what to do. And that seems uncomfortable, that seems nerve wracking. And for some reason, we think that the best way to do it is somehow avoid it, but unfortunately it's not. So the best way actually is to embrace it and realize that you're going to be in situations where you're going to trip up, you're gonna suck at something you may not know the answer and that's okay that happens to every single one of us so as soon as you believe that it's completely okay to be uncomfortable step number two is to start taking inventory of the things that you would feel uncomfortable with if you had to walk into that situation and a few things you would consider would be diagnoses that you're not really sure how to manage or chief complaints that a patient would have that you may not know how to deal a good example is most people suck at treating pain when a patient says I have pain and you try your first two things that you're used to after that you're not really sure where to go and you obviously have to treat the patient's pain so those are great things to take inventory of that this would be something that if i had to walk into a room i'd feel uncomfortable and as soon as you have your list and step number three is going ahead and taking just bits of your time through your week of addressing those go to up to date and fill in the gaps of what else you could use to treat that patient or watch youtube videos on those certain topics because again your house gets a little cleaner it doesn't look like an episode of borders anymore and you become more confident and more control and you're able to navigate your first year as being a physician we have a few more tips coming in this video but if you're enjoying these tips and you want more help on your residency journey or if you're an intern and you want more advice definitely check out the intern survival guide if you kind of want a step-by-step -step approach of how to be super efficient effective and essentially a superstar intern at whatever residency or specialty you choose that'll be linked down below now step number four is definitely making sure that you find time for you this may seem it's a little bit off place when we're talking about how to become the best physician possible but one of the biggest issues with residency is people feel like like they just have to go to residency and just deal with a three to seven years of stress and hope that after that when they're making good attending salary and their life will be easier they'll have time to finally you know pay attention to themselves if that sounds familiar that's probably what most med students and pre-meds tell themselves when they're at their respective phases the truth to the matter is that it never gets easier you only get busier so you have to get better at managing your hobbies your priorities so make sure you find time for yourself as i go through residency i know for sure that i have less free time than i did when i was in medical school but i still enjoy doing things like working on the md journey videos and blog posts as well as doing 
things like fitness. And so I've still managed to find time to record these videos. Also things like training for a marathon during my intern year. It's completely possible, but it starts by you looking at a blank schedule and saying, these are the times that I want to dedicate to me, my hobbies, my growth, and then fitting in other obligations. Now, obviously you have a work schedule now when you're a physician. So those are times you aren't able to be flexible around, but you're definitely going to have days off. You're going to have afternoons where you may come home a little bit earlier and you can use this time to rest if you're sleep deprived or exercise. If it's been a while since you've been to the gym, make sure you're always fitting your priorities in that way. You can always feel like a wholesome doctor. And that's one huge step to becoming the best doctor possible. And finally, step number four guys is really fake it till you make it. Because if you embrace being uncomfortable, you realize that you're going to be really uncomfortable comfortable for the first few months of your intern year and going into your second year of residency. There's going to be so many things that are continue to trip you up. So if you're always looking for events where you're going to be confident day in and day out, it's just not realistic. There are definitely days where I felt amazing coming home because I learned something a month ago and then I was able to apply it, taking care of a patient and actually worked. And those are great. But then the next day I'm going to go ahead and have another stumble through my hoarders home and encounter something else that I just wasn't ready and prepared for. But again, it's another lesson. That way, if I encounter that same patient complaint, or whatever it may be, I'm ready for it next time it comes around. So make sure that you understand that things are not as bad as they seem. Continue to put yourself in slightly uncomfortable situations that's going to help you make huge tries as a first year physician. But those guys are tips that I'm actively using even as a second year physician to always constantly level up my game to make sure I'm becoming the best physician possible, but also just becoming a wholesome individual. So if you guys enjoyed this content, make sure you let me know in the comments section with any questions you have. If you found this helpful, just let me know. I really do appreciate that kind of feedback and hitting that like button definitely supports the YouTube channel, supports this video. But again, it also tells me that you enjoy this kind of content. Please make more like this. It helps me out. And if you haven't done so already, you made it to the end of the video, consider subscribing because we're putting out two videos just like this one on a weekly basis. And finally, if you're going through residency, you're struggling, or if you're about to start intern year pretty soon, and you want to learn not only how to survive your intern year, but really how to become a superstar, consider checking out the intern survival guide. And I'll link that down below. And you can see some results that other people, including myself, have gotten through the program. That's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for making till the end. I appreciate you. As always, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for being a part of my journey. Hopefully I was a little help to you on yours. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Bye.